to recovery efforts. To monitor how well the striped bass are doing, the Fish and Wildlife Service researchers tag and count the fish. Since the moratorium was lifted, striped bass numbers have improved dramatically in the Chesapeake. As long as stocks are healthy, the striped bass will be managed to maintain a sustainable yield, which means the number taken each year should not endanger the future of the population. What's the matter now? Just everything we're showing is happening somewhere else. Nothing ever happens here. So, make something happen. I read on the internet about this kid who created a wetland in his own hometown. Hey, why don't we put him in our story? Our story? Okay, your story. You can show what a kid can do. There's snails everywhere. Up and down this place. The whole entire area. Here's you some snails. This is Jason Spinell. And here's the three acres he turned into a wetland near his hometown of El Dorado, Illinois. This was three years ago when Jason was 13. Since then, he's spent more than 3,000 hours doing research at the library and working in the field. I kept riding by this big barren basin next to our shopping center here in town. It was a runoff area from the parking lot. And it was always filled with trash. I figured it wasn't doing anybody any good. So I decided to turn it into a habitat for plants and animals. I wrote the shopping center owner and convinced him that people would enjoy shopping here better if this basin was put to better use. I didn't have a lot of money, so I needed to get a lot of help. A nursery donated 300 trees to plant. A sawmill donated lumber to build a boardwalk so people can see what live in wetlands. Another company donated interpretive signs so I can tell why wetlands are important. So Jason, why are wetlands important? Before I started, I didn't know anything about wetlands. Now I know that they serve as natural filters. That's real important because we eventually drink the water that goes through them. Also, they provide habitat for insects, birds, and reptiles to live. Wetlands are disappearing all over the world at a fast rate. But here's one place where we've created one. Jason was pretty good at raising money for his project. His essay on the environment won $7,500 in a contest sponsored by American Express. He spent some of the money on the wetland and put the rest into his college savings. He also got grants from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the North American Wetlands Council. He planted a prairie on one side of the wetlands and on the other wildflowers. In the wetland, he planted the copper red iris, which is threatened in Illinois. This wetland is also a bird refuge. I have a barn swallow nesting in this box. I know this wetland isn't saving a whole lot, but it is helping plants and animals that are losing their habitat because of development. It gives them a place to live in a town where they're protected. Some kids think that they can't do anything to help out the environment, but that's wrong. Believe me, if I can do this, then you can. Great story, man. People need to work together as partners to protect diversity. It takes a lot of effort to save an animal when it's almost extinct. Yeah, and there are more than 400 of them on the endangered and threatened species list. Including 22 snails, plus over 525 plants. But remember, biodiversity isn't just endangered species. It's all the other ones, too, and their habitats. Jason's smart. He's preserving practically a whole ecosystem. So what if somebody says, why not just let species die off? You know, why should we interfere with what goes on in an ecosystem? Are you saying that? Well, I don't know. Just sometimes I think we should just let nature take its course. Your broken arm didn't heal itself. A doctor interfered, didn't he? Yeah, but Rick's got a good question. That mass extinction 65 million years ago killed off a lot of species, like the dinosaurs. So maybe extinction is a natural process we shouldn't be messing with. But that's the point. We have been messing with nature. Polluting, destroying habitats, overusing resources, and it's affecting us. Would this be a good time for my story? 
It's about making a medicine from a plant. Okay, here we go. Okay. This is my friend Nicole. She's about the same age as me. A few years ago, I found out that I had leukemia, which is one of the worst kinds of cancer. I was treated with a drug called vincristine, which comes from the plant, the rosy periwinkle. It was first identified on the island of Madagascar, off the coast of Africa, where a lot of forests are being cut down today. Does that mean that the rosy periwinkle might become extinct? No, since scientists found out that it was fighting cancer, it is being grown all around the world. So that's why a lot of people are trying to save the rainforests. Who knows what other plants out there could be made into medicines? Well, I know one thing for sure. If it wasn't for the rosy periwinkle, I might not be talking to you today. What do you think? I think it's good they saved that plant before it went extinct. Yeah, humans are causing most of the extinction now. Do you know the world population is supposed to double in the next 50 years? That's gonna make it even harder to protect places where wildlife lives. Wait a second. Why don't we do something ourselves? Around here, Sammy and I were fishing a couple weeks ago, and you can't even eat the fish in the river, the water's so polluted. Can't change that. Well, maybe, maybe not. Hey, we can volunteer ourselves at the National Wildlife Refuge. It's right downstream. You know, every month we can go help pick up trash, count birds, whatever they need done. Yeah, and then we can film what we do and put ourselves in the video at the end. Hey, just like Alfred Hitchcock. You know how he's always showing up somewhere in his own movies? Who's Alfred Hitchcock? We did volunteer at the National Wildlife Refuge. As we canoed downstream, we saw Canada geese and a Baltimore Oriole. Our first job was to clean up the riverbank. We pulled over wherever we saw trash. What do people think? The whole world is their trash can? Then we met our first species that's in trouble, right here in our own neighborhood. Today we're going to be looking for blendings turtles up in this traditional nesting area. What we do is we look for the, for the tracks that the, that the female turtle makes in the sand. And uh, here we've got, we've got a track right here, and there's the, there's the nest, and there's a, there's a turtle moving away from it. We'll get her now. The female turtle, she, she'll dig her, her nest with the hind leg, scooping out a little bit at a time, and once she's got her hole built, then she'll She'll lay one egg at a time until she's deposited seven to ten eggs. Once that's done, she refills the nest with her hind feet, and then she'll tamp on it with her plastron to compact the, the soil. And when it feels right for her, then she'll move off and go back into the marsh. So what do we do now? Well, we're going to help the turtle out by putting a wire cage over the nest to protect the nest from being dug out and, and all the eggs eaten by raccoons and skunks. They home in by scent onto the turtle nest and they'll destroy them. So we push this into the ground real well so that they won't dig it out. That'll protect it until the eggs hatch in late August and early September. There she goes. I wonder if we'll ever see her again. Great ending. Nice. Yeah. Good job, guys. Got a hard work put to you. Now let's roll the credits.